Hello, my name is Jessica. I'm the creator of Once Upon a Pesto, and today's chat is going to be about Norwegian food and recipes. So joining us shortly is Devani L, and she is over in Norway, and she is a food guru, loves cooking, um, knows all about the food over in Norway, so I'm going to invite her up and we'll get this conversation going. Uh, really excited about this because it is a country in Scandinavia and um, it's, you know, kind of less known in the food world, but she is here. And so welcome, Devani. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me on your show, Jessica. You're so welcome. And um, so excited to talk about Norwegian food uh, recipes. You know, what is the significance of food culture in the country? Um, and so let's dive right in. So tell us a little, little bit about yourself, you know, where you're located in Norway and, you know, how you got started in your passion for cooking. Oh, wow. That's a lot of questions. One question. <laughs> I've just moved. So I live in the ocean and I'm a little than I used to live. Uh, so here it's all about the ocean. Uh, um, how I got into cooking, I don't know. I've always, <laughs> I've always made food. Uh, I found a, a little book from when I was to school. I think it was like sixth grade with my handwriting. You know, class book of how to cook and the, the, the rules there. So yeah, it's kind of funny. I've, I've always come like this. <laughs> Fantastic. And, you know, sixth grade, you've had uh, a lot of years to kind of hone in your skills. And um, what, what was it like growing up um, in, in your country? You know, I've never been to Norway, and I'm sure a lot of these people watching are familiar with, you know, Scandinavia, Northern Europe, and specifically Norway. So what is, what is uh, unique about your country and the culture? And, you know, growing up when you reach sixth grade, uh, how did you get into the kitchen? Kind of, you know, tell us about that childhood experience in Norway. It's cold, very cold <laughs> here, you know? So um, for, uh, we have summer, I was a little girl before the train. We had summers for about, you know, uh, three months a year. Uh, and of those three months, we could have like nice weather for two weeks. Uh, wow. And if we did, uh, we were very, Kind of fell in the you know. So um, the weather here determines everything we do. Uh, and from I was little, my father uh, was a war veteran from uh, yeah, the Second World War. <laughs> so I'm old. Uh, <laughs> he taught us, you know, be frugal with our. Mm. So the um, main when I was a little girl, it's not like this now, but it was we all summer preparing for winter okay yeah so we were out picking berries and picking potatoes and picking everything getting up from the ground because the, the fruit and vegetables only grew for three months mm. so it months you had to collect as much food as possible to last you next year yeah and there were laws that you couldn't uh import potatoes before our um um, stock of potatoes or our, our pile of potatoes were actually eaten. So we okay. couldn't get fresh potatoes imported. I think that rule is somewhat modified now, but still there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you cannot bring a potato to Norway without being special <laughs> of some sort. I don't know. I just don't bring them. So, um, so, so yeah, it was all very frugal, very little food. Uh, you only share, you know, among the certain Selves, you you know, so you see a Norwegian family walk by a family who's eating, you see they'll walk away or they look away because they don't want to disturb somebody and their food. Mm. You know, I'm saying like the exact opposite of any country for the south where they're like, oh yeah, come on, join, come, 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 you know, not like that in Norway. You know, you have it by yourself and that's it because that's all you have. So it's, uh -huh. it's um, it's like a frugal thing that that we're sort of born with, you know? Okay. So, uh, which is why I have these leftovers that I always have from the freezer. <laughs> and we don't know about anything. <laughs> I don't manage, like my post today, I don't manage to, to, to write on it what it is. So uh, it's a guessing game. When I take them out, 
recipe from like all kinds of meals. And I sort of have to just make it one meal that you can actually eat. Sometimes it's good, but it's been and I'm happy. <laughs> as long as you're happy, that's good. Yeah, yeah. so frugal is like the, the key part, part of the Norwegian. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and what are, um, take us through some of the, the main uh, dishes or significant foods. You know, you mentioned potatoes and berries. Uh, mm -hmm. What are kind of those throughout the year, no matter if it's summer or, or those cold winter months, uh, what are some key ingredients that you see in the culture and food? Oat, wheat, and potatoes. I think, okay. yeah, I think that's... Um, uh, the essence of every Norwegian meal. You live in Norway, you have to adore boiled potatoes. You just have to adore it. <laughs> you have it, uh, well, at least when I was a girl, every day for dinner. It's like the Irish um, culture. Um, mm. It's it's the staple food. It's what we're surviving, you know? It was like party in my mom's pasta, but my father, you know, didn't consider it food. So he eat it. So he only he only served pasta when my father was away. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you enjoy pasta? <laughs> I love pasta. I love rice. I love everything. I you know I travel in my kitchen. I make food from all over the world. I try, yeah. or at least I try to. I'm not saying I succeed, but it's it, and people are happy. So yeah, I guess it's it's okay. Yeah, it's very very. Um, uh, my father was very, very old-fashioned and uh, traditional in the Norwegian. Okay. And basically, uh, it's meat and potatoes. Okay. Whole food here. And fish. Fish, fish, fish. Mm -hmm. Lots of, depending on where you live. Uh, and, um, yeah. So that's the Norwegian, <laughs> Norwegian stuff. <laughs> okay. Great. And what would you say, you know, kind of how are they prepared? Is it um, traditional? Is it stovetop? Do you bake it? Certain seasonings? You know, how are those meat and potatoes served in that culture? Okay. Uh, the Norwegian food is all about the produce. Okay. Because we, we, I grew up, I think I can list it. It's like salt and pepper, bay leaf, uh, cinnamon, and muscat, and a couple of other spices. That's it. Okay. That's it. We don't have any other spice. So we have to sort of love the produce itself. You know, like mm. if you're a lamb, a piece of lamb, you have to like to take it because there is no makeup on it. No, I haven't hidden it away. And when it comes to the fish, it's even uh, more because there the fish taste of the actual fish rules. It is a violation of food culture if you from the fish. Okay. If you have it cod, cod is the most predominant flavor, which has mm. no flavor at all. And we only yeah. add salt to it when we boil it. I the um, crazy thing of adding a bay leaf to the water for my mom, and she's like, I can't eat this. You ruined my fish. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. All about the produce in itself, you know, and loving the produce to make it as good as it can be. And then sure. other things that are less flavorful with it. Mm -hmm. You know? Norwegian um, essence of the Norwegian cooking. Yeah. Yeah, some people, you know, some people would think that as as bland, uh, comparing it to other cultures, foods where there's heavy spices or lots and lots of herbs. But but really, like you said, Devani, that idea of relying on what the food actually tastes like almost goes back to like basics and, and really kind of appreciating it for its true worth. So I, I really find that fascinating. Yeah, and I, I really didn't have anything to hide it, you know? Mm -hmm talking about three months of summer and then there's what ice and snow and minus 20 degrees i tell you there's no food outside at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know but we all got thrown out we don't have to stay we don't get to stay inside we get to go out just like a you know uh the, the norwegian tradition going out in 
playing with the other children or going for hikes or biking or whatever. But being outside doesn't matter what it's like because we mm-hmm. have that, you know, compensate for the, the you know, cold cream for our cheeks, mittens and, you know, hats. We're talking 20 and we're still outside, you know? <laughs> <laughs> When I was in school, we were allowed to stay inside the, um, uh, when we had a break, when it was minus 22. I think it's changed to minus 15 now. All the kids have to go out every, every hour. But the best thing about this is to come back inside, because then we get hot chocolate, and we get mm. balls, and we get, into, we get to eat wheat in all its glory, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm telling you, there's nothing, food tastes always the best if you've been three hours outside before. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, like, it's fantastic. It doesn't matter what you have because you're so, so hungry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Your body's working to keep itself warm. And, you know, speaking of outside, Devani, that makes me wonder, um, the idea of getting food, do you have any outdoor markets in the summertime or, you know, kind of what is that grocery store shopping for food experience like? Um, for somebody who's lived uh, not all her life, horrible because it is not fancy. It's not, it's cheap and it's food. It's mm-hmm. not, not an experience unless you go to those very, very fancy, very expensive markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, where it costs a lot more money okay, for the food. So it's actually quite bland and boring. Uh, there are no outside markets because it's cold. Mm-hmm. Tomatoes outside in my city, you have to keep it inside. So yeah. was, except for the used to be, um, in Berlin, there used to be a fish market where you could actually grab and point, I want that fish, can you, you know, slay that fish and kill that fish? And then make it fillet it or whatever you're going to use it by heads for you. Know, uh, but they got inside, so choppy <laughs> outside no, that I know of. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but there are uh, fortunately and bless them, there are uh, not from Norway who moved here and they have opened their local shop. Ah, they have the produce that we're looking for, you know? My favorite shops are the ones who are run by, you know, Turk or some kind of Asia or, uh, and I'm still trying to learn all the new differences, finding out, you know, but I know the difference between an Asian store and a Turkish store. That I do know. Between like Vietnamese, Chinese, I have no idea uh, because it's too vast and too, um, too much. For me to learn in my age, you know, because it's like you have pasta, we have pasta. This is spaghetti, that's it. You know, no other types. Uh-huh. It was spaghetti. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so, me, spaghetti, and then I go into a, an Italian shop, and I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing, you know? Yeah. Shapes and all these flavors and all these. I didn't know it existed, you know? It's almost overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, it is very overwhelming. <laughs> for, for, um, uh, from the Norwegian background, but I'm a little lucky because I come from a, a, a. I would say that uh, of foodies, my family is foodie on top of foodies because it's all about the meals. It's all nothing matters but the meals. So we're a little crazy there. Uh, and my grandmother, no, my great great grandmother. Okay, we're talking 1900. She. Uh, her daughter didn't want to bring her friends home from school because at the house she had to eat two kinds of vegetables for dinner <laughs> because she served vegetables instead of meat and potatoes. That, that was like so avant-garde, and so crazy that wow. that nobody really you know could relate to it. Uh-huh. But we eat our fruits though, you know, we do eat fruit, uh, apples and pears and. Okay. What was, yeah. you know, when you were growing up, what was the first dish that you learned to make? Was it, you know, meat and potatoes dish or was it something incorporating those vegetables that's, you know, not as common? 
No, those vegetables have never, you know, my mother didn't subscribe to my great grandmother's uh, cooking. Okay. <laughs> she went to the meat and potatoes. No, uh -huh. I, um, um, I've done this on my own. I, mm -hmm. I've left the, the fold and um, gone on my own kitchen adventure. So this okay. is all from me personally. What I'm doing on Instagram is yeah, coming just from my own interest. Also from my own travels, hmm. because um, as I travel and I discover the world, you know, you come to in, you go to England, you know, which is normal, you know, regular for us to go to to London and discover Indian food. Oh my God, you know, what is <laughs> like okay, do this and read, read the list of like ingredients. Uh huh. Like it took me a whole year to get all the spices that were actually on the list that I had to do, you know? And then I looked at it for another year and before I like actually cracked the code and had the dairy try in dish. And I only know and my dear friend Sharu is trying to inspire me continuously to make <laughs> but I only do my homemade chicken from Punjab. That's <laughs> <laughs> and that's 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 really good you know that yeah. you know yeah. from, from my my background that's yeah. making Indian meal is it's insane it's, <laughs> you know like you have um uh Florical, which is like the norwegian dish because when the when the um the sheep are being slaughtered for fall they only slaughter them twice a year so you can only get it fresh twice a year and that's wow. in the or for Easter, that's it. Uh, the rest is frozen, and um, uh, and then you just like have salt, pepper, butter, cabbage, lamb. That's it. And then you get a list of you know wonders <laughs> together. It's amazing, yeah. Well, would you say among the meats that you traditionally eat in Norway is is lamb kind of higher up in in popularity, or kind of what are the others? Um, beef, lamb, how do those rank? Well, again, uh, we are a climate sort of making rules here. We eat everything. Okay. We eat it. <laughs> no rules of that is not being able to eat, nor you can't eat that. You can't have this combination, or you can't have that combination. Mm -hmm. uh, here, it was a matter of having food. So whatever you get a hold of, you ate. And which is so when I travel a lot, I try to look what other people are doing because some people get a little like, Wow, are you making those combinations? I'm like, Yeah, sure, why? You know, it looks good. Uh -huh. uh, I can't deal with that, you know, because there, there, are, there are rules, but we don't have those rules because you just basically traditionally eat whatever is available, uh -huh. you know. So uh, we have some weird combination, you know, we have things together, which is um, in Cyprus considered horrible, like, like, like taboo. You just oh. don't, ah, you just don't, <laughs> you know? And I hear my eggs and my fish and I think it's really nice, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, so we have um, uh, our own way of doing things up north, you know? <laughs> and how far from the coastline are you? 600 meters. Okay. Yeah. Very so, close. So, so is that, um, you know, kind of for those watching and don't really know the geography of Norway, Norway is on the west of Scandinavia. So there is a, a lot of coastline, let's just say that. So. <laughs> south. I, I, I live in, you know, the south of the nor Midway. I'm, I'm all the way south, but I'm not in the south part of the country yet, but I'm on the Verge of the South. <laughs> so uh, the temperature here are better than where I used to be, uh, Oslo or around Oslo. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and take us through a day. You know, we talked about some of the, the ingredients, the flavor combinations or, or lack thereof. And then, you know, the access to food, it, it was like the kind of key dictator of, of what you eat. But take us through a day, Devney. What is a typical breakfast like in Norway? 
Well, um, that's uh, slices of bread with some uh, uh, or meat, uh, some salami or um, yeah, any kind of meat. Roast beef you can have, have sliced chicken or sliced turkey, and so it's bread, butter, and that's okay. It. Mm -hmm. uh, two or three of them, uh, and uh, like true. Norwegian, uh, when you're eating your breakfast, you make your lunch. Ah. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> it, it's, you know, the, the toppings or something, but yeah, same bread, same butter, same topping. You put it on top and that's it. And you put the, wrap it in a piece of paper that we have, moth puppy, we call it, food paper. Put it in your pocket and you work. And uh, about around 11 o'clock, because we start early here, um, uh, they eat that for about 30 minutes of lunch, and then they go back to work. Uh, and then there is a, which is a little more elaborate. It's actually hot. Mm. Uh, and uh, it could be anything. I'm a modern Norwegian woman. The food takes about 15 seconds to cook because in Norway, we have no servants help. Mm -hmm. So any person in Norway cleans food, cleans her own house, work, cooks the food, does everything, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, women, even though we're very liberated, the, the, the job of doing the housework still tends to lean towards the women having at least most of it to be done. So uh, the food suffers in my opinion, <laughs> they eat lots of half finished products from the store. Ah. Yeah. Now, if you're coming to my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Different. <laughs> uh, I usually say, I don't understand how these boxes or how these bags can be food. Because for me, food looks, some, looks like something else. In the, in the, in the, in, yeah, it's food. It's food. So I always start there. Okay. Uh, and then I go for, whatever, you know, um, uh, whatever idea I've stolen from somebody on Instagram. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> or let, not stolen, but been inspired in terms of uh, finding out, just trying new things, new flavors. It's, it's a, a, I'm a new flavor junkie. Uh-huh. So I have something new all the time if not i get so what's, what's been the the greatest new flavor that you've discovered um it's a hard question but if you had to choose just one or two uh, well the it's not a new flavor uh it's an old flavor that i used to study in new york uh and uh, uh chicken chow mein uh, ah. yeah I come home from studies uh, next to the laundry. A guy who, you know, did my laundry. Uh, there was this like little hole in the wall. It, I mean, it was like not a big plate at all. And you could get one of those white boxes, you know. And uh -huh. I, <laughs> I need it. And chopsticks. And, yeah, yeah, with chopsticks. I, I had actually um, an idea about losing weight a uh, long, long time ago. Uh, and so I decided to eat all the food with chopsticks. I didn't lose. <laughs> Way, I just got really good with chopsticks. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, basically, uh, as I was into Instagram and I, you know, I, I started doing this seriously from type March, uh, it just dawned I have to try chicken chow mein. Mm. And it is the winner. It, that's what came to my head when you asked. So, uh, <laughs> that's the best. It's just very hard to, to, um, Get it perfect. So I'm still uh -huh. working on it. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it's good nonetheless, and you're just going to make it even better. <laughs> well, it's got something to do with liquid in the, in the pan. There, with chow mein, the perfect chow mein has no liquid left. Okay. In pan, yeah? And so when you cook and you use the noodles, it's like a little different to know how much, noodles, how much liquid are these going for other ones you know and so but i'm still i'm trying to 
picture of the noodles. So it's like, okay, next time you buy the thing, then you're like one step further to get. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. And Devni, let's finish then with desserts and drinks. What is, you know, do people in Norway eat dessert after dinner, sometime, you know, after they come home from work, and then um, drinks, you know, is, is coffee part of the day, tea? What do you guys eat for dessert and drink? Oh, uh, what do we eat for dessert? I don't think, um, I don't, dessert is part of the daily regime anymore. Okay. Uh, don't think those uh, ragged housewives have time for something like that. So, but uh, we have, um, it's like a trifle, oats and apples on top, which is divine, the quality of the apples, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like a Tilschlurt Norwegian dish that's quite, um, uh, famous uh, and there are puddings uh, stuff like that coffee in our drink all the time uh, it's comparable to American coffee uh, oh. but not strong or anything like that but uh, if you don't have troubles just with sleeping I think from morning until they go to sleep oh wow <laughs> I cannot have coffee after two o'clock because then uh -huh. I don't so, uh, other than drinking, uh, beer is favorite. Um, uh, I think we drink more wine now. and other than that, it's, we, we love what it's like our, uh, our, like our thing, you know, <laughs> you always have to have water. And water is, you know, it's, it's our, um, yeah, go to, I drink water all day. You know, I have a big water standing there, and I know if I drink enough water, it will be empty. So by uh -huh. six o'clock, it has to be empty, you know, because <laughs> later it will be trouble in the night. <laughs> so, uh -huh. yeah. so that's maybe I, I feel like I'm part Norwegian because I have my own water that I drink. <laughs> yes, Two of those a day. Like uh, in New York, they, they, they did have that as a, yeah, water was always. <laughs> always on the table always coming around but we also drink a lot of soda stuff but since i decided to become healthy i don't have it in my house nobody gets that so they get me or they bring whatever they want you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. going back to coffee devani i have to ask knowing that coffee is typically a hot drink and norway is typically cold most of the year do you find iced coffee in norway yeah, you'd find it, but it's not a, a thing. Okay. It's not, yeah, it's not like frappe or uh, no, no. <laughs> not a, people look weird at that you can buy at the shop, and you shake them, and they become edible. You know, it's like if mm. you really just have to get something. You know, uh, people look weird at me and say, "Why don't you have a coffee? You're crazy." So, no, it's not a thing here. Okay. <laughs> um, and anything else, uh, Devani, that you can think of, you know, kind of the, in, in your travels and knowing your country of Norway that stands out as unique to Norway in terms of food? Well, it would have to be brown cheese. It is. Okay. You can only get it in Norway. And it is uh, uh, rooted deeply in our culture. And uh, the cows you are left out to pasture you know in the summertime they go to the mountains because all the grass that grows uh, low is being collected for food in the winter uh -huh. so all the cows and the sheep the goats and the everybody goes to the mountains and of course when you send the the animals to the mountain you have to send for the animals and those were mm -hmm. ladies, and they lived in little in the middle of the mountain uh, they um uh, like ultra Norwegian, you know, like butter was funny. So all the butter that she could make out of the milk was kept and was given to the farmer. Uh, and then there she was, because she had to like make all these products up in the mountains, mm -hmm. all with all the mountains, with all the animals, 
produce and that will be the wealth of the farmer for the winter, you know? Wow. And so she found a way to make way from the cheese making, you know, the liquid that taking the cheese, uh, uh, I don't know what it's called, the cheese part out of the milk. Yeah. Yep. To make that into Norwegian brown cheese. Wow. Cooked it. It's actually caramelized way. It's really good if you have grown up on it. And it's like, I have to have it. Um, and somewhere along the way, another lady decided it's smart to add a little bit of cream to this cheese. Hmm. To or um, luptious, or they were competing with each other to make the best this or to make the best that. You know, we're talking 150, 200 years ago or further back. Uh, and, and that cheese still lives today. And we. Huh. Uh, and it's part of made different kinds of products on it, and, and that there is nothing more Norwegian than brown cheese. But what is it compared to? Like, how could you compare it to another cheese in terms of taste? No. Is, it, is it soft? Is it a hard cheese? It's like a block of cheese. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> Something completely different. Uh, <laughs> of cheese and it's brown and it's caramelized and oh. I had it on in my feed uh, and one lady from Kuwait she said it looks like caramel I'm like you're not far off <laughs> <laughs> we have um, a cracker with um, or, or toasted bread and butter uh, cheese and some people are very daring and they have jam that as well me i'm really crazy because i have raw onion on it that's like i'm the only person in the whole world who eats it. <laughs> but i love the, the onion with the cheese does something to me that i makes me uh -huh. so <laughs> <laughs> the only one in norway and the only one in the world that's yeah, a big probably yeah. even here even here where we love all combinations they look at me like you are absolutely crazy <laughs> 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 well, hey, you know what's good, and uh, they're just missing out. <laughs> I, I keep trying to sell it, but nobody wants to listen to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, we'll all keep an eye out for that on your Instagram, because we know you love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and speaking of that, Devani, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, as we're wrapping up here, this conversation has been great. I want to also say thank you to all those who are watching. If you're watching it now or if you're watching it later, uh, I encourage you to ask comment or ask questions, comment and tag Devani and I. And uh, Devani is super happy to, you know, kind of share more insight into the Norwegian food scene. Um, but Devani, tell us, you know, where can we stay up to date with your cooking, your food adventures, and, and all that you do? Where can we find more? Of me? I, I'm just at Instagram. Devin is okay. That's where I'm at. No? That's where I put out my things. You know, I'm not so young, so I, I, I have technical um, challenges. <laughs> it's okay. I really challenge. So I have a, and uh, I used to call her my Apple boss. You know, because she's the one who knows all the things that I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't introduce like YouTube or the other things because that would be too much for her. So I'm just on yeah. Devin's Instagram and that's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So everyone watching, uh, I encourage you to follow her. Check out some of the food dishes. They're always delicious and beautiful looking. Um, so yeah, Devni, thank you so much for joining me today on this conversation. It has been very interesting. I've learned so much about Norway, so much about the food culture and um, you know everything that you've talked about. It, it's so unique because you are in Norway, but you do things a little bit different. And I think that's really, really inspiring. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.